Hi everyone. Our goal this year is to understand how the economy works. We have seen in an introductory video that understanding the economy means asking big questions such as the ones below. So today we'll start with the first one of them. How did we end up living the way we do? If we focus on this question, we will see that there are numerous ways we can approach it. After all, it is a very general question, permitting a variety of answers. So we want to make it a bit more specific. We can rephrase this question as follows. Why are some countries so much richer than others? And we can follow up with, was it always the case? To be able to answer these questions, we, we will need some data first. We will observe this data and we'll come up with theories that can explain what we see in the data. But as the world changes and generates more and more information and facts, novel theories confront the new facts. Based on how well the novel theories match the data, we can evaluate the usefulness of old explanations, old theories which used to dominate the field in the past. This is what professional economists do every day. This is also, in a nutshell, what we do here in this course. So what are the big historical trends we care about? What data do we, do we work um, with to be able to observe these, these trends? Let's, let's, focus, let's focus on an interesting uh, picture here. The one illustrating how GDP per capita has moved over time for the last 1,000 years. Uh, this is a picture for several big economies. Now, GDP per capita is a measure of how much money the average person in an economy lives with in any given period, typically a year or a quarter. It does not tell you how well they live, it just tells you how much money they have. So we can look at how much money people live with in two different ways. First, we can see a snapshot of GDP per capita across a number of countries at a certain point in time. Using this approach, we can say, for example, that USA is still richer than China, or that UK has experienced a worse economic downturn than most developed economies during the COVID-19 pandemic. Second, we can use the GDP per capita data to build a long history of economic welfare of the average citizen in a certain economy. The long history of GDP per capita is exactly what we see in the figure here. In fact, we see two things here, which we will explain in turn. First, we see a very long history of what? Of misery. A misery which made most people around the globe live in similar and in similarly dismal conditions. But second, we also see a swing to a dramatic improvement in the way we live in the last 200 years. And we say, when I say we, I mean the average person in a developed economy. Notice that some countries took off while others did not, and it took them another century to start taking off. Well, we'll explain those facts as we go along. Comparing average values of income across countries and over time um, is sometimes not very useful. This is because, as you will see in your statistics course this term, an average value fails to reveal so much information. Therefore, we, the economists, sometimes also work with much more than the averages. We work with the entire distribution of certain variable. Take, for example, the entire distribution of income across countries at a certain point in time. Have a look at the following figure. For its most part, it's empty and we'll populate it very soon. Um, but let's focus on the extremes for now. 
On the poorest extremes, it's Liberia, a country in which even the richest people fail to make the ends meet for by by the by Western standards. In the richest corner sits Singapore, a country so rich by the Liberian standards that even the richest people in Liberia may envy the welfare of the poorest in Singapore. The point here is that we can use data on how much income a certain group of people has within an economy and build the so-called income distributions. Typically, we split the population into deciles. That is 10 equally populated groups and measure the average income within each of those groups. Then we record what we see in, in an Excel table and start making cross country comparisons uh, or start making comparisons between the rich and the poor within a certain country at a certain point in time. We can also take the richest 10% across the globe and compare their average income like we do in this figure. As you can see, there are vast differences in how well rich people live across the world. In some countries, a million doesn't make you a millionaire. We can use this intuition we have developed so far to read further into the figure. Let's populate it. What if we build the income distribution bar graphs for each country? and populate the figure with those distributions and allow the distributions to change over time. Wouldn't that be cool? Things will suddenly spring to life and become very interesting. More and more facts will start popping up right in front of our eyes. More trends will start appearing, which call for even more explanations. That's exactly how we move the field forward. We look for more data, to see if the old explanations still work. And if they don't, we come up with new ones. So, as you can see, in 1980, the world was a relatively equal place relative to what we, what we have today. China and India, um, the two most populous countries in the world, were also among the poorest countries. Gradually, however, they started taking off. A process which Britain has gone through nearly 200 years ago was happening in some of the poorest countries in the world. By 1990, they were rapidly catching up. China has already started their remarkable quest to become the world's largest economy. Meanwhile, however, the income distribution was not staying constant. As the countries grew, so did the income disparities among their citizens. This process is perhaps inevitable and was experienced throughout history. So fast forward 25 years and you will see further shifts in how the world income distribution looks like. You will see a process of further convergence of some countries to the living standards of the rich world. You will also see a massive rise in the income differences between the top and the bottom 10% of the population. A convenient way to slice the data is if we just focus on those two extreme groups of the population for each country. If we just omit the middle 80% of the population, we will see a remarkable fact. As the world was growing and becoming richer, it has also become full of contrasts. One of those contrasts is in income. The world has become a much more unequal place in the last 40 years. Towards the end of the year, we will try to explain the income inequality part of the story. There's also a special third year course on inequality. For now, we'll focus on the growth part. Before we move on with growth, however, we need to define precisely what we will be observing to grow here. In the next video, we will give a definition of GDP and disposable income, 
and we will discuss some approaches to measuring them. Please keep watching. Thank you.